Hi everyone, we are here at Big Data London. Super excited to be with Eddie from Kestra. Eddie, welcome to The Robert Show. Thank you so much. I'm super excited to be here with you and a little bit nervous. Don't be nervous. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about orchestration, Kestra, Kestra 1.0, uh, which was recently released. Uh, congrats on that. Uh, but just to start with, uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Tell us more about what you do at Kestra. Sure. So this is my first month at Kestra. Nice. And I've been brought on as the lead educational engineer. So I'm actually creating Kestra Academy. So there's going to be an academy for people to um, learn Kestra from the fundamentals to advanced and to enterprise as well. So it's going I love to be it. super exciting. Yeah, I think education comes first and uh, Kestra does it very nicely. I know with the open source community as well, you all have so much documentation for the community to learn, try and get on with their journey. So let's get uh, into the discussion now. All right, so uh, Eddie, I wanted to ask, uh, Kestra is declarative at its core, right? Uh, for developers, what's the biggest difference between defining workflows declaratively versus writing Python DAGs? Uh, what's your thought there? Well, being YAML, Kestra being YAML at its core, everyone can get involved and even has a no-code editor as well if you want. Yep. And there's AI Copilot too as well. And it, But it all ends up being YAML. Which, everyone can really understand and so that's really awesome and then in addition to that if you want to be able to run scripts that you've written in bash or ruby or python then the yaml plugins can just call out to those scripts so it's a really like kind of lego and it's like these building blocks that you can all bring together and yaml is the glue that's holding it all together that's fantastic and thanks for uh, sharing those details awesome Eddie. i also wanted to know from you most of the teams you know hesitate to move to different orchestration tools because of the migration complexities. How have you seen that uh, happening at Kestra very gradually and slowly? Uh, can you share a little bit about that? Sure, I've had some great discussions today at the Big Data London yep. uh, about people migrating to Kestra. So I've actually heard some, some stories, which is great. Um, so with Kestra, because it's, it's YAML um, and it calls out to their scripts, no matter what they're written in, because each script, if it's Python or Bash, it will run in a yep. Docker container. Yep. So they can bring their scripts over without migrating them, which I think is really awesome. And they have the YAML, which is the glue that brings it together. Yep. And there's also almost a thousand plugins here at Kestra. So therefore, they can move things away from their code that they've maybe done manually and use built-in plugins so that it's a lot cleaner and it just becomes a few lines of YAML config. I've got a story to share later on about how I built my own workflow and I just used plugins and I was oh, wow. like, wow, it's doing so much with only kind of a few lines of YAML config. But we'll get to that later on. Can't wait to hear that as well. Uh, that's awesome, thank you. Also, uh, from a technical point of view and from a developer point of view, I have a question around uh, the playground in Kestro 1.0 allows testing workflows uh, and you know that step safely. Uh, I'm curious to know a little bit about uh, how does this improve the developer workflow and shorten the feedback loop. Uh, do you have any thoughts around that? Oh, I do, because when I first joined Kestra and started playing with it, this was just such a game changer, because you have multiple steps. So the first step might be to get data from somewhere. Right. And then the second step's going to be manipulate it, and third step might be to send it somewhere. But that first step, getting that data, one, it could be biggish data, it could be 10 gigs, so you don't want to download it every time you're making tweaks to your flow when you're manipulating that data. Mm -hmm. You want to download it once, and then you want to maybe iterate on what you do with that data, that kind of transformation. So you can, in the playground, you can just hit that replay button on that second step. Oh, nice. Which is really, really nice. So it's a good experience. Yep. It's a really iteratively, it's very iterative. Yep. And it's fast. So it just makes it so much quicker. And calling that you know, API on the first step, could be quite expensive. It could actually physically cost you money because maybe it's a chargeable service. So that uh, playground is just, I don't know, one of my favorite features. I love it. Uh, thanks for sharing that, uh, Eddie. Eddie, also since uh, you've been a developer for more than 15 years now, uh, yeah, uh, don't want to jinx it, and uh, you have seen it all. I'm kind of wanting to learn from you uh, with Kestra's plugin ecosystem and language agnostic design. How do developers integrate it uh, into their existing stacks without having to rewrite everything? How does that work? Uh, tell us a little bit more into, into uh, how it all works. Sure, so Kestra has loads of plugins, so you can integrate with so many third-party tools uh, from Postgres to Slack to GitHub. And you don't have to write this yourself. You just need a token and a channel name and 
um, a URL and it can, it can do these things for you. Let me give you an example. So when I joined Kestra, I, I wanted to build my first flow. I thought, well, what could I do? What could be useful? I wanted to build something useful, not theoretical. Yep. So I wanted to monitor my uh, website to make sure it was up and running and um, that I got a 200 status code. And if I didn't, I want to be notified somehow. So the way I did it, I wanted to use the built-in plugins for Kestra. So I could make a HTTP request to my website uh, and with the YAML config in Kestra, I could uh, check if it's a 200 status code. If it is, just log everything is fine. Uh, if, if something's wrong, I don't get a 200 status code, then I actually want to log the HTML response. Uh, but I also wanted to raise a GitHub issue um, with the information, with the label bug, and also um, send me a Slack notification as well. Yep. And I did that without writing any kind of Python, JavaScript, Java, or anything like that. Oh, it was wow. just in YAML config because that was using the built-in plugin. So that was super useful. And I got this to run every five minutes on a scheduler. But you can trigger these things by webhooks. I mean, there's so many integrations that you can kind of go down this rabbit hole and you go, oh, I want to integrate with that tool. Not that you need to, but you just want to kind of integrate with these tools. As a developer, we do like to explore and, and play around with these things. So yep. anyone watching, I highly recommend going to have a look at it and then just have a play, have explore. You can download it with Docker very quickly on your laptop. And then if you don't want to write YAML, you can use no code editor. But if you want to use AI, there's also AI Copilot where it can write the YAML for you and then you can just tweak it if you want to make some tweaks. Just explain what you want and uh, it, the AI Copilot will build it for you, all within the Kestra editor. So it's just, it's just there. It's just so easy and makes the job of the developers easy, I feel. So that's fantastic and thanks for sharing that uh, real insight in how you can, if you know, obviously have done your work uh, when you started. But just for the record, I did not use the AI Copilot when I first started because okay. I wanted yeah. to learn the YAML, I wanted to understand it. But now, it just becomes so much more efficient. You get an idea, you can just write it into the prompt and it generates the YAML for you. Exactly. You might tweak it a little bit um, or make it more dynamic because you might change it so the, there's var inputs and variables so you can reuse that flow for a different website for my monitoring case and so on. So The capabilities uh, have gone higher. Yes, So that's exactly. a good news. It's, uh, it's really, really awesome. Awesome. This is great, Eddie. Thank you. One more thing uh, that I wanted to ask from a developer point of view. Uh, from your experience building with Kestra, uh, Eddie, what uh, are the most common usage patterns you see developers adopt first? Can you share a little bit about that? Sure. I can give my real life example because I started do. at Kestra this month. Yep. So what most developers do is they download the Docker image locally, they go to local hosts, um, 8080, and, and just get started that way. Yep. And then they start building their flows, and they might have an existing script that they might bring into, into their flow. So the flow is like one step, and it calls their script. And with the Kestra plugins, they can then slowly sli simplify their script. So therefore, they're using the plugins uh, um, naturally within uh, the Kestra flow. Yep. Uh, and then they might go show their teams. They might deploy it to a VM in the cloud uh, or even Kubernetes. And then um, they might add their team members to it. And then they can all kind of see what's happening. And I think the next step naturally is when things fail in that one script, they won't know why. So then they might start breaking up their script into multiple steps yep. within the flow. So when something fails, they know exactly what part failed. They can immediately can see it. They can retry it. They can debug it, whatever they need. Even the logs, will, they can focus on the logs of that single step rather than the entire flow. And with their team mates kind of getting on board and using it as well, then they might later on want to move to the enterprise version from the open source version. I think yep. that's kind of like a, a natural flow that natural they, they've flow. bought into it. I and mean, the great thing is that they haven't got a vendor lock in. It's open source, it's YAML. They can yep. export it or sync it with a Git repo on any platform. So they've got that. Um, I guess freedom, but a lot of people do stay from what I see and what I hear today. It's been great chatting to the community here, you know, the big data community as well as the Kestra community. I've met some people from the community, so that's been awesome. I'm loving uh, all the attention that Kestra is getting for sure. Uh, I see people kind of, you know, obviously uh, jumping in, you know, crowded year around Kestra booth. Uh, so looks like y'all are doing something pretty interesting. They're, they're, they're doing, a, I'm, I'm so happy to be part of this team. I mean, the team are doing a great <laughs> job. Um, they, I think, almost at 22,000 stars on GitHub. Yeah, so exactly. It's, that's it's amazing. Incredible. And we've got Hacktoberfest next month as well. So that's that's going to be exciting. huge. It's yeah. going to be going to be great. And uh, one more thing that I wanted to ask, and this is for the developers out there, for the audience out there, who want to learn more about you know what you're building, 
what Kestra is building in terms of the education platform as well. Uh, where can they reach out to you? It could be LinkedIn X, I don't know, GitHub maybe. Uh, and where can they get started their journey with Kestra in terms of the education platform? Great as well? question. Uh, I recommend that they join the Kestra Slack. Yep. It's a great community there, especially if they want to get involved in open source for Hacktoberfest. Kestra are running challenges as well. Oh, nice. Uh, which is uh, really great to see those challenges. Uh, and you can speak to the, the Kestra team there, the community and the team. So that's really good. You can find me on X and LinkedIn um, as well if you want. Uh, I look forward to geeking out with people during Hacktoberfest. We've got live streams, Twitter spaces uh, for Kestra. So come and join us. Um, Get involved, it's a great way to uh, meet network uh, without networking, and it's a great way to upskill uh, and learn new technologies and, and contribute to open source. It's a great way for you to stand out from the crowd. Love it, and uh, it's the best way to also come closer to the other developers, learn what they are doing in this space, and uh, go and try Cash Kestra, for exactly. sure. Exactly, right? and the last thing I'd like to say is, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe below if you haven't already. Ravi Show's channel is awesome. You can see all the awesome events he's going to and you can learn from the great conversations that he has. Thanks, Eddie. Such a pleasure chatting with you. Thank and you. Uh, we'll keep the conversation going, but all the best on the education platform. We'll keep uh, our audience posted about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today.